Theresa May obviously uh, attending or sending a message today. The relationship with China appeared to go a little cooler after she became Prime Minister, though. She took a pause on Hinckley Point. Has that done any lasting damage? No, I don't believe it, and it has. I mean, I think there was a lot of commentary around the, uh, the pause while the government reviewed the Hinckley Point decision. It went ahead. Relations, I think, could not be more cordial and friendly at all levels. And, and we've seen Chinese investment continuing to flow... Uh, into the UK. I'm just looking over your shoulder at the cheese grater, reported about um, a week or two weeks ago as having yeah. been sold to the Chinese for about a billion pounds, so we don't have to look very far. Reports today that the Hong Kong subway operator MTR is taking a stake inside the South West uh, Trains right. franchise, and, and overall for 2016 it looks like 25% of Chinese investment into the EU came to the UK. So um, I think um, things are looking um, still very much on track. Now, what about Brexit? How easy is it going to be, in your view, for us to strike a free trade deal with China outside the EU? Well, it is very important that we start the discussions with China. China has become our fourth largest export market. The Chinese are very keen to start discussions, but we shouldn't kid ourselves. The Chinese are going to be very, very tough negotiators, but the prize is a very big one. I mean, if you talk to the Australians, for example, there's been a huge increase in, say, Australian wine sales to China since their free trade agreement. So I believe talks will start early. There's a big prize, but it won't be easy. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because obviously we talk an awful lot about Chinese investment into the UK, but it's, it's not a one-way street. And there, there are opportunities for UK businesses over in China as well. There are at all levels. I mean, at the conference today, we had 400 business people, some of them old China hands, some of them new to China, and it ranged from the chief executive of Hamleys telling us about their flagship store opening in Beijing later this year, a dairy farmer selling from Cheshire, selling goat's milk to China. I mean, the opportunity is, is huge. It's not just Range Rovers and Rolls-Royce engines, but at all levels, the Chinese consumer is hungry for what Britain has to offer. And China, big advocates of free trade. We shouldn't forget that. I mean, at the uh, G20 summits uh, last week, the Chinese finance minister was quite uh, outspoken in warning against protectionism. He didn't name names, but do you think he was referring to Donald Trump? Um, I'm sure he was, but the Chinese uh, have been very patient. Um, uh, with Donald Trump. I was in Beijing um, a week ago and, and Li Keqiang, the Premier, was at a meeting with business people. He was saying we don't blame anybody, um, no country should take credit for being the standard bearer for global free trade at the moment, we don't blame countries, we're all in this um, together was essentially his message. Do you think though the Chinese conversion to free trade is genuine? I mean they're quite often accused of protectionism themselves. Well, as I, as I said before, when it comes to free trade agreements, we will, uh, you know, as the UK, now that we're free to start doing it bilaterally, we'll, we'll test them out. But again, all I can say is that uh, the Premier last week was saying to um, big inward investors, the deal I have for you is you invest more in China, we will give you level playing fields, opening up will continue. Now, it's going to be a long process, but I think the direction of travel um, is not going to be reversed. All right, Lord Sassoon. Good to see you. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, Ian.